If you're the type of person who looks at Ghosts of Tsushima and wishes it was a multiplayer beat-em-up with old-school pixel graphics, then let me introduce you to Clan N. This debut release from Turkey-based studio Cremative sends us back to a time when ninjas and samurais roamed the countryside fighting evil warlords and mythical monsters. It's a fun and often charming brawler that may be a bit too long and repetitive for its own good, but still prevails thanks to the online and local multiplayer action. But is the game still worth picking up when you're stuck inside with nobody to play with? Well, that's what I wanted to find out. Grab your swords and shurikens, because Akuji is threatening the peace and prosperity of the Far East. You see, Akuji was kicked out of the ancient samurai group Clan N when he disrupted the balance of peace, knowledge, and time, and instead decided to dabble in the dark arts. To make matters worse, this spiritual imbalance allowed him to slaughter villages and quite literally steal the abilities of those who he killed, turning him into the most powerful sorcerer in all of the Far East. Now it's up to four of Clan An's bravest warriors to defeat the monsters threatening their land and in Akuji's reign of terror once and for all. What we have here is a fast-paced beat-em-up where up to four players choose a character and immediately start mashing buttons. We get heroes as diverse as a ninja named Akira, an old man with a scythe, and brother-sister duo Reina and Daiki, one with a sword and the other with a powerful staff. Each of these warriors has a personal story that shaped them and a reason to fight against the evil sorcerer Samurai. You do this by pulling off long combos using two melee attacks, as well as powerful shurikens that can be picked up along the way. Aside from a special ability that'll help clear the screen of bad guys and a couple of evasive tricks, you're basically left hammering the attack buttons to avoid getting killed. The good news is that these characters can be upgraded along the way, giving you the ability to improve their stats and even purchase more lives and throwing stars. Now, one thing that I like about Clan N is how they're constantly adding new villains throughout the seven-stage adventure. Sure, we'll see the same stabbing and spinning ninjas from one level to the next, but the game also adds wolves, samurais on horseback, massive men with mallets, and way more. There's also a nice variety of large bosses to fight, including everything from a giant spider to a sea monster. Unfortunately, the boss fights seem to fit into two distinct categories. Either they're way too easy or frustratingly cheap. Speaking of level designs, the beat-em-up action is broken up by a series of unique mini-games. There's one in each stage, with each of them offering a slightly different challenge. There's one where you're dodging boulders on a grid, another where you don't want to get crushed by the cave, and there's even one that wants to be Flappy Bird for some reason. Look, I'm not saying that I'm going to want to go back and play these more than once or twice, but they're a fun diversion from the usual button mashing. So, when you read the bullet points on the website, the developer boasts that there are seven levels divided into more than 50 sections. While that's certainly true, I'm not so sure I would call that a good thing. Perhaps this is less of an issue when playing with three other players, but going through it by myself, I definitely got the sense that Clan N had a lot of filler. Stages that probably should have only taken 10 or maybe 15 minutes are often stretched to be more than a half hour. That wouldn't be a problem if the stages were constantly changing and fun to explore, but we tend to see the same locations repeated over and over and over. In the case of the pirate ship and secret enemy lair, we're literally seeing the same rooms repeated, usually with the exact same group of bad guys. Couple that with the simplistic gameplay and you're left with a brawler that is too repetitive for its own good. Clan N is also surprisingly easy, even on the default difficulty. While it's true that this is the kind of beat-em-up where you'll be swarmed by the enemies and take a bunch of cheap hits, the bad guys are often nice enough to leave behind drumsticks and even full chickens to replenish your health. 
I'm not sure why everybody's packing so much freshly cooked chicken, but I'm telling you, about half the enemies end up dropping the helpful item. Sadly, it sometimes takes a moment for it to appear, so a surprising amount of time is spent just waiting for the bad guy to stop flashing and reveal that tasty meat. Now, it's also worth mentioning that Clan N has a real stability problem. After not running into a single issue in the first half of the game, I found that the final four stages all crashed on me, straight back to the dashboard. The good news, I suppose, is that the game has a good checkpointing system, so you won't lose much progress, if any. The thing is, I can see this being more of a problem when playing with friends, both online and off, so I definitely hope the developers are able to squash the lingering bugs soon after launch. Although it's easy enough to play along by yourself, Clan N is at its very best when you bring friends along for the ride. The four heroes have a cool look and a compelling backstory, and I'm a big fan of the simplistic pixel art design. What's more, the seven different minigames show that the first-time developer is thinking about ways to shake up the action, and that's a good thing. That said, the game is let down by the repetitive gameplay and overlong story. Too much filler and frustrating technical problems keep Clan N from being the next great samurai brawler. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Well, at least we used to. Actually, you know what? I just recorded a podcast that kind of goes into where the reviews went. We're going to post that a little bit later this week. Anyway, here's the question I have for you. What is the cooler hero? Ninjas or samurais? It's the great debate. And when it comes to video games, you know, I'd, I'd probably go with ninjas. But I don't think there's any top in samurais when it comes to movies. Yeah, sorry to Leonardo and the rest of you mutant turtles. You know it's true. Go ahead and leave your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back later this week with a review of Rigid Force Redux, Max and the Book of Chaos, and Paws and Souls. We're also going to be talking about what happened over the last few months in a long-form conversation, so be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.